guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Train Topia by Board and Dice, designed by well, that guy. It plays two to four players, it takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game, you're basically going to be creating a train topia. You'll be placing down rails, you'll be adding trains to those rails, putting commuters on those trains, scoring points for the locations that you acquire as you draft certain tiles, as well as placing tourists on the map, which will score you points based on the locations that are associated with your train tracks. So all the different fancy things, maybe it's a Ferris wheel, carnival, those kind of things, you'll score points that way. You are basically going to be doing a draft in this game as you place tiles down, similar to games like Carcassonne, in which you're just basically going, I pick this, I place this, you pick that, you place that, but it's not just tiles, and you're not placing down people based on how you build things. You're actually choosing between whether you want to pick a commuter, or a tourist, or maybe a mailbag, or a train, as well as the train tiles. And then certain tiles will associate with certain money bags that you'll be able to utilize those and get special unique tiles, which will score you even even more points if you can play them correctly. Try and build the longest train track, the best type of trainway for the best type of commuters, as well as the most luxurious destinations for your tourists to travel on in the game, Traintopia. I'll show you a two player game down below, at least the basic walkthrough of how to play the game. We'll come up and discuss it and then you can pick up the game down below if you're interested. So here we have a two player game of Traintopia set up along with my cute, cute dog, Dante. And in the game, everybody is going to get a secret objective. There are multiple different types of them. You'll shuffle them up and deal one to each player, as well as a unique scoring card and a player reference card. This is for the scoring for the end game, and this is what you do on your turn. Everybody also will get a starting tile. There are four different types because there are four, up to four different players. And you're going to just shuffle them up and deal them out. Each of them should have a starting location for your trains to go. Basically, so you have a front and an end. And some of them will have multiple colors. Others will just have a singular color. You'll tell the difference between them with the yellow background on them. In a two or I believe a four player game, you'll have eight of these guys here. You'll shuffle this deck up and deal it out. Uh, pl place it face up, face down, just like this. You're also going to have an ending card, which is going to look just like this one. It's going to have nothing down here at the bottom with these specific requirements. And then you're going to set aside everything else. So the extra card for the Traintopia cards, the extra player references, and the extra objectives, which you may use throughout the game. You're also then going to shuffle up the tiles and deal out four. But remember, don't shuffle these ones. They have a blue border. Go ahead and set them aside so the players can see them throughout the entire game. There should be, I believe, ten of them, right? Yeah, and you go ahead and just set them like this so that everybody can see them. Then you're going to take this bag here, and these are all the different types of commuters. There's three different types, and I believe there's about five of each of them. And you're going to put them in this white bag and mix them up. Here we have the victory points, or the currency. And then we have the money tokens, which you'll place on the tiles as you draft. The last three things you need to know about are the trains, the mail bags, and the tourists, which you'll set aside, and you will place them down as the rounds proceed. First and foremost, you're going to go ahead and take the number of players times two in tiles and place them out from the stacks here and allow players to draft them. And it's fairly simple how it works. One player will take one, another player will take another, another player will take one, another player will take another, until there are none left or one left, depending on the number of players in the game. And as you take these, you're going to be placing them down on your board. And you can build your board as long as you're not making any weird connections, you can pretty much build it. There's certain rules as to how you build your board, but I'm not going to go into them. Just know that you can't do stuff like that. Your train, your your your, your track train track can't go into a, no, a non-existent location, so you have to have it connecting to nothing. You can also can't do any like infinite rails or anything weird like that. So I'll build something like that for you guys to see, and then on this one here, I don't know. We'll go ahead and build something like that, I suppose. That just gives everybody a starting chance to get your train tracks moving. And then the real game begins. We will take one of these cards, you'll flip it over. Then you're going to go ahead and take two of these guys, random it says. So it says a little question mark. So just draw two randomly from this bag here and place them down. It also says you're going to need two tourists. You'll take these two guys here, placing them here. And then based on the number of players, how many tiles are going to have come out. So in a two player game, you'll have five tiles come out. One, two, three, four, and five. And then the drafting begins. A player will take one of these guys here and then go ahead and place it. And then another player will go ahead and take one of these guys. Or they can choose to take one of these guys here. 
Now, if they want to take one of these guys, which is a tourist, when you place them down, you're going to score victory points based on the adjacent tourist locations to a train track. So this is a tourist location. So they, this player would score one point when placing this guy here. Um, you would also be placing down these guys here. And if you place it on a location, you're going to check the color of the different locations um, on, top of, uh, on the bottom of the train tracks. In this case, you have three yellow. And then this one's a yellow or a green. So if you place this guy here, you would score one point. Whereas if you place this guy here, you would score no points. This track likes, one, likes the gray one here. And of course you can have one of each type of tourist on a location or a train track at any given time. Can't have more than one of each type though, but you can have one of each type on each different type as well. And so basically what's gonna happen is eventually people are gonna keep drafting these until there are none left. And the next round would begin and you're gonna go ahead and take out the next one here. You're gonna go ahead and go through the stack and place them down just like this. You'll have a train, that's a mailbag. Here's a person, and then you're gonna go ahead and take another one of these guys, pull it out randomly from the bag, and draft once again. And your, your train track is gonna get bigger and bigger. You can take this train and you can place it as well. And trains will score you based on the end game bonus, and it tells you during the final scoring. You're gonna be scoring points based on the money tokens on the board. So whenever you place a tile that has a little money token on it, you can place that there. And at the end of the game, if you have two trains on two different tracks, adjacent to two types of money, you'll score four victory points at the end of the game. So it's cumulative. The longest track is gonna score you points as well. So whoever has the longest train track will score you victory points based on first, second, third, and fourth place. And then additionally, money bags are really important as well. So money bags are gonna score you victory points if you place them on a track that is completed. So if we go ahead and just ignore this part of the tile and place this like this, this would be a completed track, right? And then it would look, how many tiles does it take to complete it? That's two to three, so we'd score two victory points. And it'd be four victory points if these two were different colors. In addition, you would score double those points if you had a money bag on top of that track. And so that's how money bags will score you points. And the game's just gonna keep going and keep going until all of these cards are done and all of these have been drafted. And then you're going to do this last card here in which everybody can take one from the player with the least amount of points, choosing first, and then to the next player, and to the next player, and to the next player. This is a wild, so this can be a wild of any color of these different transmuters here. This is a basic train, a basic mailbox, and this is a special close off for a track. So maybe I want to do something like that. I can then close a track off, which is very useful as well. And from there, you just do the end game scoring. You'd score the finished tracks, you'd score the trains and how many money tokens are next to them, and you'd score the longest track. The only thing I really didn't explain here is if you want, you can spend money as free actions on your turn, and that will let you get certain things like these beauties here, which you can place on your board, giving you more victory points, or you can use them when you go to place, for instance, oh, I don't know, a commuter onto a location. So let's say that you had this guy here and you wanted to place another one of that color on there. You couldn't do that. But if we had this here and we place this guy here, and let's say that this player had a, a money, he could spend that money and put this yellow guy on because there's no yellow guy currently on this track and then choose to score for gray, scoring five points as opposed to the two he would normally get utilizing this money at the cost of not scoring points for the victory points that trains might give them at the end of the game. And that's the idea of the game. It plays a little bit like Carcassonne, if you can tell, with some unique little twists to it. The game has a bit of a timer involving these cards here with a unique end of game scoring. And then the final little thing is for a buck at some point as a special action, you can trade one of your Traintopia objectives for a different card. And these are all gonna have different requirements on them, which will score you points in the end of the game three of these dudes here on two different tracks or having eight of these on one single track will score you victory points at the end of the game when you flip it over and they're secret and they're just for you in Traintopia by Board and Dice let's talk about it Traintopia by Board and Dice this game is very very similar to Carcassonne people who have played Carcassonne where you're placing tiles down attempting to make roads attempting to make cities to score points and there's certain features on them this one is very very similar but the unique differences are, of course, being able to use the extra different pieces. Are you going to want to use the trains to score points in the game based on the different monies that you've managed to build on your board? 
Are you going to go for something with the mailbags here, trying to get as many closed locations as possible? And remember, closed tiles are useful and limited. Uh, you're also going to be obviously going for tourists and making your trains as tourist friendly as possible, having those locations adjacent to the train track as you're building. And remember, you have to have the, it can be adjacent even if it's on the diagonal, so that counts. But in order to score points with the, the little uh, commuters, they have to be exactly on the train track. So in this case, this will score you two, but just for gray. And which is why you might want to use something like the, I don't know, the, the, the money in order to change a character. If you have a huge track that just gives you gray, you can score a lot of points by spending money to make that one track. Commuters all be the same color, even though they're technically not the same color. Um, but yeah, the game is a lot of fun. This is one of those games that will take probably one or two plays for you to get used to because there's certain differences in this game than other tile placement games. The person who scores the least is going to be able to take this action la first at the end of the game, but scoring the least throughout the game does not mean you're not way ahead throughout the game because the end of the game scoring is what's really going to put you over, which is part of the strategy to the game, uh, which I think is something that you're not going to like to begin with, but after you've played the first time you will understand the concept of how it is built and why you want to play that specific way. All the tiles are really high quality, the artwork is very nice, and the game feels great to play if you like puzzle games. Yet again, my wife stopped me in this game, and she probably will stop me in all games similar to these puzzle style games because I can't wrap my brain around them as much as she can. But nevertheless, I still did enjoy this game. I like the differences between the tourists and the commuters and being able to choose how I wanted to build my tracks and where I wanted to place them. I was fairly surprised as to how big my tracks are. And of course, another difference in this game along with some other ones is you each get your own separate train tracks. You're gonna be building in your own world and everybody else is gonna be separate to you. The competition is going to come in the form of what tiles you take during the draft or what choices you make for commuters and for tourists and for mailbags and trains you will take as well because there's a limited amount of everything. Certain tiles can be very interesting like this one here is full and I mean just full of the different tourist locations whereas one like this one has three points on gray and a tourist location on it so you have to choose how you want to spend your money or if you want to because you can score points with those trains and money and you can score up to what does it even say on this card? It's quite a bit of points. You can score up to 10 points for having four money and it has to be unused with one train. So one train on a track with four money will score you nine points, which is the difference between maybe two or three cards that you could use to spend money on. So it depends on how you want to build your track. And I love the style game because you're going to get better as you play, better and better and better. You're definitely going to learn as you play and depending on who you play against will change your strategy and how you want to go ahead and build your tracks. You're never going to build the same track more than once, but you might use the same strategy more than once based on who you're playing with and what options come out throughout the game because the tiles will come out in a different order and they'll be placing them out as you go throughout the game. I think you get the idea for this game. If you played any other tile placement games, you're going to understand this one as well with the different changes and the unique added aspect of having your own location with different types of objects to place on the game board. And overall, I really, really enjoyed this game. This is what I strongly suggest for you Carcassonne fans out there, any of you tile placement fans who enjoy building your own little city or building your own little trainway. Another one for you train fans as well. Highly, highly recommend the game Train Topia. Even though I suck at puzzle games, I really enjoyed this one. I'll keep it around specifically for my wife so that she can beat me again on it. Ugh. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review video. If you like this video, check out some of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at the game Traintopia down below, link in the description. Like, subscribe, and comment on this channel. Hit that little bell notification button. Tell them, Dante. Yeah, you guys, you guys should do that. As well as taking a look at our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games live, just like this one on the stream, and we give away games as well. And finally, check out the game MoonshellGame.com or UnfilteredGames.com, your choice. And you can go ahead and see what we're working on, our new game, which is also a puzzle game. Kind of cool. De very, very, very different, but still puzzling nonetheless. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, we look forward to reviewing games with you in Train City next time. Now get him, get him, get him.